Ina, does it really come into effect today? Because we know that the company's amendment bill has been postponed. Is the new act effective from today? Yes, the uh, minister published a government gazette in which he announced the uh, deferment of the act until 31 March of this year. So I'm assuming that it is effective from today. But the unfortunate position is that we haven't been presented with a final set of the regulations. We uh, don't know when, when and if they will be made available today. Let's, let's start off then, Mamadupi, by looking at the consumer in South Africa. Are we abused by companies? Are we apathetic? Do we complain enough? Do we need more protection? Look, I think the studies that have been conducted indicated um, as far back as uh, 2000 that clearly there was an element of abuse of consumers in, within our market, which then obviously precipitated the need for the Consumer Protection Act and the provisions in terms of that. But I, um, the, in relation to the issue of whether consumers complain enough, we don't believe they complain enough. That is why the Commission was actually set up in order to not only deal with complaints, but to also make sure that we stimulate a consumer voice, which is to make sure consumers complain and complain in the right format and in relation to the correct issues. Pasi, if we don't have the final set of regulations, as Ina says, um, how do we start off with this act from today if we don't really know what's exactly in there? I think there's a process to actually make input into the regulations, and I think as time goes on, I think we should be having time to actually finalize that. And I know the Commission is working very, very hard with the Department of Trade Industry to actually finalize um, uh, that area. And also, if I were just to you know, correct something, I actually work for the Consumer Protection Office in Gauteng, not for the NCR. But uh, we have had uh, numerous discussions around the whole issue of you know, the regulations. There's been input from stakeholders, uh, from industry, and other consumer protection um, uh, offices throughout the country. And I think as, as, as time goes on, I think they, they should be able to be finalized. I may add, I think the, the regulations, it's quite correct, they haven't been promulgated as yet, but the, the department is at an advanced stage and we do expect that they will be promulgated sometime very soon, because obviously we also need the regulations to operate as the commission. You know, how do our new consumer re uh, protection regulations stack up globally? No, very well. I thought this, uh, I mean, they obviously took examples from, uh, 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 well, ex for example, the deeming provisions in the draft regulations relating to unfair, unjust and unreasonable contract terms have been taken directly from UK legislation. So definitely they did look at examples uh, internationally. Patsy, just as an example, how are consumers going to be protected better going forward from here? What kind of recourse do we have? I think the consumers are going to benefit a lot out of the Consumer Protection Act, precisely because in the past there hasn't been this kind of protection actually coming forth. Um, we have had instances where consumers would not actually be able to actually, you know, come together as you know groups, uh, as a, as, a, as, a, as a, a group voice to actually voice their complaints, and and this act actually makes it quite specifically clear to say uh, consumer uh, 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 people could actually come together as, as groups and get accredited and deal with issues that actually affect them. I think it will also uh, benefit them in terms of, you know, the Act has actually codified a lot of common law principles which have now been made, you know, uh, specific prescripts of, of the law that would actually generally apply in, you know, uh, relationships between consumers and, and business. For instance, you know, issues like, you know, refunds, you know, return of goods and all that. We, we haven't had, you know, such a very huge um, uh, uh, area actually worked on uh, previously in terms of previous legislations uh, than what we actually are seeing now where consumers actually have got, you know, their rights actually entrenched in terms of the constitution, in terms of the Consumption Act. And I think that is actually going to benefit consumers for, I mean, for, for a long time. Now, Modupi, uh, policing and monitoring of this, how is that going to work? Look, um, obviously the Commission has specific powers to make sure that there's compliance with the Act. So in line with that, we'll obviously check whether a complainant has a valid complaint, whether there's been a transgression in terms of the Act, and if we identify that there is a transgression, we then obviously have what, uh, the powers to impose what we call a consent order or a compliance notice. In terms of that compliance notice, we'll say these are our findings, there has been a transgression, and we recommend that there be s a certain sanction. And in terms of the Act, the sanctions that can be recommended is up to 10% of turnover or a million rands, which of the two is higher and this obviously can then be sanctioned by the National Consumer Tribunal.
Do you have the manpower to, to cover all of this, though, because I can envisage a whole bunch of complaints piling up on your doorstep? Look, we do anticipate there will be a large number of complaints, but I think it's also the systems that we'll put in place. Because obviously co complaints don't vary that much in terms of the nature of the complaint. So if we categorize our complaints properly and obviously come up with a system on how we dispose of co complaints of a similar nature, then we should be able to deal with those complaints. But from a capaci capacity point of view, we believe that, yes, we do have the capacity, and obviously if we put the right systems in place, then we'll be able to deal with the complaints accordingly. You know, any reservations on your behalf? Yes, uh, I'm actually upset that we still don't have the final set of regulations. Um, uh, consumers are aware of the Act. They're looking forward to the, they were looking forward to the effective date of the Act, and there's been a huge obligation on suppliers to comply with the Act. But uh, to ask them to be compliant by the 1st of April and not providing them with the regulations is, is just not fair. Uh, what sort of hindrance do you think that could be to the implementation of the Act from today? Well, uh, as I said, there's, I mean, there, there are about 30 deeming provisions, provisions deeming terms uh, set out that are deemed to be unfair, unjust and unreasonable. Suppliers would be re re uh, required to look at their terms and conditions to determine whether there are such terms in their contract. But now they're sitting with a draft set of regulations and not the final set of regulations. So we have been advising uh, business on the draft set of regulations, which may change. We don't know. And that, I think, is unfair towards business. It's fair to consumers, but at this stage, unfair to business. Now, but Dupi, do you expect much change between the draft and the final set of regulations? Okay. Um, in relation to that, really, I think it would really be um, remiss of me to comment because obviously it, the final say is that of the Minister and the Department of Trade and Industry in relation to what goes into the regulations. But from where we sit as a Commission, we don't anticipate that there will be any drastic changes because obviously we are working on the assumption that we are really going to have a like of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the final regulations will be a lot like the draft regulations that we currently and have. And what recourse will companies have if they haven't seen that final set of regulations and consumers do take complaints against them? Well, they obviously have the right to petition the Minister to obviously finalize the regulations as soon as possible because we do anticipate that it's not only a prejudice to business but I also believe even consumers need that certainty in relation to what will be in the regulations but as I said I believe that um, the, way the department is working tirelessly with the minister to try and finalize those regulations. Fasi, any reservations on your behalf? Well I think I would agree much with what the Commissioner has actually said and obviously I think it affects uh, both parties because until such time as we have the regulations, the legislation is not complete. Uh, the regulations are subordinate legislation that actually supports you know, the, the enabling act. And I think as soon as that actually happens, I think it will be for the benefit of everybody. You know, I understand that banks and insurers aren't going to have to comply with the law from day one. Is that your understanding no, as well? No, that's not true at all. In fact, under the definition of services, banking services are specifically included. From what day one? Yes. What is excluded is uh, a, a service provided under the Financial Advisory and Intermediary Services Act to the extent that it is advice or intermediary services as regulated by that act. And then the Long-Term uh, Insurance Act and Short-Term Insurance Act activities under those acts are excluded. But if you read the transitional provisions, the uh, Act intends giving them a certain period of time within which they must get their Act together in order to provide similar protection to consumers. If they don't, then this Act may become, uh, may apply to them. Uh, but Dupi, how about municipalities and utilities such as ESCOM? Do they also fall under this Act? Um, what has happened, I think if I could just, just add one little bit, what has happened is that the banking sector has obviously made an application for an exemption so that the Act does not actually apply to, to them. And this obviously has been done um, um, through um, the regulators, which is the Reserve Bank and the Financial Services Board. So that application is before the Minister for Consideration. But as has already been said correctly that the, the Act does apply until an exemption is granted. Now with regard to the municipalities, it is true that a few, uh, uh, I think sometime last week the Minister actually issued an exemption for municipalities but I think it must be understood in context it is only the low capacity municipalities that would be exempt because the act is very clear that with regard to high capacity municipalities the, the request or an application for an, exe an exemption cannot be entertained under any circumstances so the issue now becomes the debate between what is a high capacity municipality vis-a-vis -vis what is a low capacity municipality but we believe we will get that clarity very soon from the Minister of Trade and Industry so it is only the low capacity municipalities and the exemption is not um, for all in f for, for, for 
forever and ever, but it is for a given period until such time as the municipalities can put in place the relevant systems. But with high capacity city municipalities such as City of Johannesburg, Cape Town and Durban, the Act will apply from day one, which is from today. Pati, would you envisage any teething problems getting this uh, legislation underway? Do you think it's going to be smooth sailing from here and a better day for consumers? Well, there will always be teething problems and obviously we'll have to you know, play a watch and see game to allow the Commission to actually settle and then to see up to the applicability of the law in terms of the complaints that would be um, uh, you know, lodged with uh, different consumer protection officers and also the commission. We from, from all the provinces and the, the statutory regulators um, do really support the commission. We support this act and we're fully behind the, the commission to, to finally you know, implement this act. And we are at the cold face of the you know, receipt of those kind of complaints and we, we should be able to be assisting. We have a concerted you know, effort amongst the provinces where we actually rallied around under the Consumer Protection Forum to see to, to it that this legislation is actually being uh, um, uh, fully administered and whatever problems that we would actually you know, uh, uh, come across with, we should be able to, to actually attend to. It's not an insurmountable task, but obviously with every legislation there is you know, teething problems, but I think the, I mean the, 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 the commission would actually settle to fully implement the act.